Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today back working on the Jimmy DiResta bandsaw project and uh, we're gonna get started on putting some body filler on this uh, old casting and uh, getting it where it looks a little bit better so that when we do paint it, that it'll look respectable. Uh, I did a video, uh, the last video in this series was kind of about this casting and talking about how it was made uh, and just some interesting things about it. We did some close-up shots and you could really see that uh, it is a fairly rough casting. And that's not very untypical at all on large castings like this. Uh, in fact, all of them would have received some filler in the factory before they originally painted. Of course, we had this uh, bandsaw sandblasted, so all they needed the paint and body filler that was on here before was removed. So we're kind of starting from, uh, from the base material again and I need to get this thing smoothed out. So let's uh, get at it. I will start off by saying, guys, I, I mentioned this the last time, doing this kind of work, doing body type work is not my cup of tea. This is not my specialty by any means, but you know, when you're doing restoration work, you gotta have to take the, the good with the bad and uh, you just kind of have to bite the bullet and get it done. Uh, I am by no means an expert on uh, this. I'm a, a rank amateur. I've done a fair amount of it over the years and uh, I'm sure that some of you body guys out there that have done a lot more of this will probably nitpick me a little bit on some of my, my practices, but I'm showing you what works for me and what has worked for me uh, in the past. Uh, again, we're not trying to turn this thing into a show quality Lamborghini. Uh, we're trying to turn it into a uh, 1800s era bandsaw. Uh, you know, we're not looking for that mirror finish like you would get on a, on a fine car. Um, this is a piece of machinery. We want it to look nice, but uh, I'm not going overboard on it. So there you go. There's my disclaimers. Let's get in here and show you how I do it. One of the challenges I've always had doing this uh, body filler work is having a good something to mix on. And uh, I, I bit the bullet and spent, I don't know, 15, 20 bucks and bought one of these uh, clean sheets. Um, this is basically just a, um, a bunch of individual sheets of paper that are kind of on here that you can just tear them off one at a time and just have a new clean place to mix on each time. Tried it out, never used it before, but that's always been one of my frustrating things. Usually I'm digging around looking for a piece of cardboard or something to, to mix on. Um, now, the product we're gonna be using for body filler, again, I mentioned this in my last video, is uh, Evercoat Rage Ultra Extra. And um, this is a product that was recommended to me by some of my viewers. Uh, look at there, that can fits just right in there. Uh, this was recommended to me by some of my viewers who do this more type of work. In the past, I've just always used the standard Bondo um, that you can get pretty much anywhere. Uh, and I will say that I really like this product compared to um, the, the, the standard Bondo. It just seems like it's, it, it, it just lays down easier, it sands easier, it's just a better product all the way around, in my opinion. And again, I don't have much of a, uh, an experience here, but I'm just telling you what works for me. Uh, I'm gonna put on some gloves uh, just to kind of keep this off of my hands. Let me get these gloves opened up. All right, we're just gonna get in here and get us a glob of this stuff and uh, put it on our sheet. Um, one little trick when working with this filler material is you don't wanna try to work too much at a time. Um, you have to kind of work in small batches. This stuff, once you put the hardener in it, will start curing pretty quickly. And you just can't, if you try to get too much, it starts hardening and you just, you, it just turns into a mess. So, um, in fact, that may even be a little bit too much right there, but we're gonna go with it. You take a little cream hardener here, and that may be a little bit too much of that. And then we'll start mixing it together. We'll just kind of knead it back and forth and, uh, until you get it mixed up really good. This uh, particular product here is kind of a greenish color. And uh, I remember right when it dries, it changes color a little bit so you can really kind of judge uh, how dry it is. But we'll, we'll mix this up real good. Be back in just a second. We'll start applying some over here. All right, we are over here on the saw and uh, we're just gonna start applying some of this. Uh, you don't wanna get it on too thick. Nice thin layers, uh, but you wanna get it covered on there pretty well. 
And uh, of course we'll come back and sand all this off and get it nice and smooth later on. Now I got some holes here that I'm filling in on purpose. So that hole up there, I've already determined I don't need it. So I'm not gonna worry about trying to, to save that hole. Uh, and I've already kind of gone over my machine and, and figured out what I need to save as far as uh, existing holes and what needs to go away. So you don't want to put this stuff on any thicker than you have to. And I'm making a mess here. Which kind of comes with the territory with the stuff, I guess. We'll kind of come across the bottom here as well. Some of this we're probably going to have to go over again, but we'll get started on this first pass. Um, anytime you're doing this work, it's usually you're going, to, you're going to make multiple passes on it. It's just a process of uh, getting it to where you want it. All right. I'm sure some of you experienced auto body guys were out there shaking your head at me right now, but. That's, uh, this is kind of where I commonly end up, right here. All right, we will let that dry and uh, I'm gonna move on to my next little section. I'm gonna mix up another little batch of uh, putty here and we'll continue on. You don't wanna try to work this stuff too much once it kind of starts to set up and gets a little tacky. Just let her alone, you'll just make a mess. We will continue on. All right, here we go with our second little batch here. Not a lot to say about it. Just kind of getting it on here as smooth as I can. Of course, the smoother that you can get it on here, the less uh, sanding and work you'll have later on. But, uh, you know, you're gonna have work regardless. It's amazing how quick this stuff starts uh, setting up too. I can already tell a difference in how easily it's spreading just from when I started a, a minute or two ago, compared to now. All right, mix up another batch. So just giving an update on the body filler situation here on the bandsaw. We've pretty much got our first coat on this and uh, I've let it cure for a couple of days. And uh, this afternoon I've got uh, Brock, my helper coming in and he's gonna actually start sanding this down. I don't know that I'm gonna be out here very much while he's doing it. I've got some other stuff going on, but he was out of school today and wanted to come work. So uh, I'm gonna put him to work and get, let, him, let him work on this. So um, one little comment, you will notice some different colors in here and I'm using the same body filler but uh, I ran out of the, the cream hardener that I was using and went to a different cream hardener and it was actually a different color. So it does the same thing, but uh, that's basically the, the color difference there was the cream hardener 
uh, changed uh, a couple of times as I was going through. It had some smaller tubes that they were all different colors. And so uh, when we mixed them up, we ended up with yellows and pinks and reds and what have you, but no big deal there. Um, what I will have Brock do is he's going to come in here and just hit this with some pretty coarse sandpaper, try to get as much of this leveled off as he can. And uh, it's, it's a process, you know, you're going to have to come back in here. I, I can already tell there's areas that uh, we're going to need some more uh, product to get things leveled out just right. Uh, when you're using this body filler, and <laughs> I'm not an expert, but I at least know this much, you don't want to get it on too thick at any one time. You want to kind of put thin coats on and build it up over time. So it is a process. Uh, you put it on, you sand it off. Then you go in there and you find where you need some more. And you put some more on and you sand it off. Uh, and not a lot of fun in my book. Some of you guys may enjoy this. This is not something that I enjoy doing. Uh, but Brock's going to get to do the grunt work today. So anyway, just a quick update. Uh, it is coming along. It's looking good. And uh, we're uh, making progress with the body filler. All right, guys. So we have been through one full round of sanding on this thing. And uh, as you can see, we've still got some roughness in here, some places that didn't quite fill out. Uh, when we were sanding this, we were trying to be careful to keep the sanding pad flat on these surfaces. Of course, we're rolling it over the edges and so forth. In some of these curves, you know, we just, we, we tried to mainly just keep it flat from one end to the other so that we were getting, hopefully we'll end up with a good flat surface, but we've still got some little low spots in here. As expected, uh, we basically, on the first round, I tried to put a coat of filler on the whole saw. So everything should have at least some filler up underneath it. And then what we did was we came in here and started sanding down until we started basically hitting in areas where we were getting into the casting. And of course you had other areas uh, that were, you know, kind of unsanded or what have you up underneath it. So next step is, you know, this it's is round two with the body filler. Now we've got a lot less area to cover this time. There's still a good bit on here, but we're not really having to hit the whole machine. We're just trying to focus on these areas like here and here and some places where you've got some obvious indentions in here and trying to get that smoothed out. Once that gets on here, another round of sanding. And, uh, you know, I like after I do my sanding to just spray it with a coat of primer. That way you can see everything in the same color. You know, when you've got the, the filler material on here, you've got various shades of the filler material to metal. It's really just hard to see this. With everything in one color, you can see it pretty easily. So anyway, we're going to go back, get some body filler out and uh, start hitting these areas that need it. It's going to take a good bit of, of material still, but nothing like that first round. And uh, anyway, we're continuing on. Slow progress, but getting there. All right, here we go. Trying to keep my layers uh, somewhat thin. Not putting on any more than I have to. The more you put on, of course, the more you got to sand off. My applicator here is not doing a very good job. Keep getting those couches in there. Round two of the body filler has been applied and I think that this is going to get really the majority of it. Um, I ended up putting a little bit more on here than I'd kind of planned when I started spreading it out. Most of this is on here really, really thin, but it, it kind of covered everything up. I don't think it's going to take near as long this time to sand this out because it is a lot thinner. It's a lot smoother already. Um, and may have to touch up a couple of places one more time 
but I really think this is going to get the majority of it. A lot of the stuff, particularly down lower, was pretty smoothed out already, but there were a few places I went ahead and put a little bit more on, and, and honestly, there's probably more on here than there needs to be, but um, it'll sand, it should sand out good, I think. So uh, Brock, my helper that helps me, he's uh, this is the week between Christmas and New Year's. The video will probably be coming out a little bit later than that. But um, he's out of school, so he's going to be coming and helping me some and uh, hopefully get this thing sanded on out here pretty quick. And hopefully we can get this thing, this body work wrapped up pretty soon and uh, be able to move on with some of the other things that need to be done to this uh, machine. So anyway, we'll bring you back and give you an update uh, once we get this sanded out and uh, making progress. Well, guys, we're getting down in the short rows on the bandsaw, getting it ready for paint. Uh, we've put our second coat of the body filler on, and most of that I've got sanded off. There's a couple areas here that, uh, well, I say me, Brock, my, my uh, teenage boy that's helping me, he's been doing most of the sanding work, but he's just about got most of it done. I've already come in here and reprimed it, and there's still just a few little small dings and little small holes and you know probably some places that could use a little bit more sanding uh, but kind of that last step hopefully last step is i'm coming in here with a, a glazing and spot putty and this is comes in a little tube it's not a two-part product you don't have to put a um, you know something with it to uh, like a cream hardener you just take a little bit put it on a spatula here or one of these applicators and all I'm doing is I'm just putting a really, really thin coat on these areas where I got just, you know, where I see, if I see a little bitty tiny ding, you know, I'm filling it in. And um, we will come back and sand this yet one more time. Now this final sanding goes a lot faster. We're not really having to take off a whole lot. This isn't very thick. This is super, super thin. You can't build up a big area with this glazing putty like you can with the, uh, with the body filler. This is just for getting those little bitty small places and uh, it does a good job. So I'm going around it right now, putting in these last little bit and uh, hopefully we'll get this thing sanded. We'll get it primed one more time and it'll be ready for paint. Well guys, I think that I'm gonna call it and say we're done with the prep work for painting here, putting body filler on this thing and smoothing it out. So I'm gonna real quickly just kind of give a summary of what all we did. Uh, I know my videoing on this has been kind of just hit and miss. This project has actually taken a good two weeks to do, maybe a little bit longer, but a lot of that has been just because, you know, I've got Brock, my, my high school boy that helps me, he's been coming in and doing it after school couple of hours, a couple of days a week, not every single day, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it's kind of drug out for a little bit of time, but we got it knocked out. Um, the process that we did start to finish was basically we put two coats of the, uh, the body filler on here, you know, the Bondo type material. We were using that Evercoat Rage material, um, sanding in between coats. And that got it down to just, you know, the little small spots. And then we went to the spotting putty, uh, which we showed. And again, two, two applications of that. So, you know, kind of each time there was less and less to do. And, you know, we would sand it out. I would reprime it so you could really see what was going on, find the little imperfections. And I'm not gonna sit here and tell you this thing's perfect right now. Uh, you could come in here and find little small stuff in here, but it, it looks good. I think it's gonna be fine to go ahead and paint it like it is. And like I said earlier in this video, guys, my goal on this, this is not a, this is not a Ferrari. This is not a sports car. And while the techniques that we're using is pretty much the same you would use if you were restoring an antique car and wanted to have this you know, super mirror finish, that's not really my end goal here. My end goal on this was, was that this casting had a lot of pits and, and uh, dips and holes and stuff like that. We wanted it to look decent. And, you know, when this machine was made in the factory, it would have had a process similar to this done to fill in those little holes and gaps to make the casting look good. All that was stripped out when we did the sandblasting, so we're basically coming back in there and do it. And again, honestly, we've probably exceeded 
what was done on this machine when it was new. At the end of the day, it's a casting. And uh, again, my goal is not to put a, a, a race car finish on this thing. You know, I want it to still look like a casting, but look like a good casting. And I think we've succeeded in that goal. Um, yes, I did not get into the weeds on techniques and stuff on how I did this, because honestly, this is a little bit outside of my wheelhouse. This is not something that I consider myself to be very proficient in. Uh, you know, I'm proficient enough to get a good job done, but a lot of you guys out there have a lot more experience doing this type of work than I do. And if you really want to learn more about, you know, doing a really nice job with, with the body fillers and stuff like that, there's lots of great YouTube channels out there to do it. Uh, I'm probably not the guy to be teaching that, but I did want to document that we did it. I wanted to kind of show you the, the high spots of what we did to get this job done. Um, it is ready pretty much for paint right now. Uh, I may have one or two little small areas that I, I you know, I, I got to noticing down there up underneath the bottom that there's still a little area down there that kind of bugs me. I haven't decided I'm, I'm probably going to go in there and you know, put a little bit more, do, put a little more effort in it. But the truth of the matter is, is when you put the wheel on this thing, you're not going to be able to see it. But that's not the point. I wanted. To, <laughs> I'm probably going overboard. But uh, but I'm going to say it's 99% done, and I may not even touch it again. We will start painting a little bit later on. I got a few things I want to do before I start putting the paint on here. I want to get a few more parts put on it so that we can kind of paint all of it at one time, and uh, you guys will see that as we go forward. But um, again, the body filling job is pretty much complete at this point in time. And we're ready to move on to the next step, uh, which I'm happy to do. So there you go. Update on the Jimmy Duresta bandsaw. That's going to be a wrap on the, this part of the series. And uh, we got lots more work to do. So come and join us for the rest of this journey as uh, we bring this, uh, this 100 plus year old bandsaw back to life and uh, get her in good operating order. And with that, guys, that will be a wrap. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up and comments. Really do appreciate those guys. That helps out the analytics a lot on the channel. Helps the algorithms at YouTube get my videos recommended in, and in front of more people. So, uh, you know, there's nothing I can do. That's all you guys. You have to do that to help me out. So I really appreciate it if you do that. Uh, hit that bell icon to get notifications when new videos are posted. And uh, with that, we're going to sign off here and uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.